Is convenience killing your drum sound? Sure, it's great to clear up on some clutter and rim mounted microphones cut down on microphone stands on the ground. But what's all of that mass attached to the drum rim doing to your drum tone? Think of the projection, the resonance, the tone. Of course, why speculate about any of this when we could simply conduct some experiments and determine whether or not there's really anything worth being concerned about here. And to be clear, this isn't just for rear mounted microphones. This applies to anything that you might be thinking is affecting your drum tone. Okay, as you probably noticed there, we have some fresh drum heads on the toms. We're using some clear G12s over clear G1 resos. And I figured that that would probably provide us with a really nice open resonant tone, something to be able to judge the impact of rim mounted microphones versus mounting the microphones on stands. We're using the Lawton rim mounts along with their snare, tom, and kick drum microphones today. And it's worth noting that the heaviest microphone that we're going to use on these rim mounts is their tom mic. And the combination of the microphone itself as well as the rim mount is about 720 grams. Now that's not an inconsequential amount of weight, but will it actually affect the sound? The first experiment we're gonna do is with the toms, both the high tom and the floor tom. We're gonna do a comparison with the tom sounds in a groove, and what you're gonna hear is all of the mics on the kit, but raw audio, so nothing has been mixed or post-produced, anything like that. Now, of course, if you were expecting some sort of a dramatic difference here, then you may have been surprised by that demonstration. And to my ears, there's no reliably discernible difference when you've got all of the microphones in the mix. But there are a lot of things going on here. Other drums being played, cymbals, plenty that could cloud the tone. Let's isolate this and do some individual dynamic hits on the toms themselves. Well, to my ears, there's more variation in the tone on a single setup than there is between the two setups, mounting the close mics on the rim versus on stands. Before we get into the comparison with the floor tom, do you think that you'd be able to tell without any point of reference whether you're listening to the sound of a close mic on the rim or on a stand? After all, in a real world scenario, the audience doesn't get an A-B comparison. So let's go ahead and see if you can recognize whether this is being captured with the microphone mounted on the rim or on a separate stand. Hard to say, right? In fact, it's pretty much impossible. You might wanna write down what your answer was there for reference because we're gonna do a variety of these blind tests and if you stick around to the very end, we'll give you the correct answers to all of them. Now, without further ado, here's the actual comparison for the floor tom.
Now, if you weren't watching the screen and you were just listening, even with the back-to-back -back comparison, it would be incredibly difficult, bordering on impossible, to determine which one was with the microphone mounted on the rim versus on the stand. But because we really wanna get into the weeds on this one, despite the fact that we're getting further and further away from real world scenarios of musical context, let's go ahead and solo just the close mics and see what we hear. So I went ahead and scrutinized all of these recordings, and I gotta say, the difference is incredibly subtle. However, there was in fact a difference, at least to my ears, but it was only really apparent when it came to listening to the close mics themselves, none of the other mics in the mix. To my ears, it sounded like there was just a little bit more clarity of the fundamental when the microphones were mounted on stands rather than on the rims, but this was only really apparent when listening to the soloed close mics themselves. And on top of that, it was only really apparent when we were listening to single dynamic hits on the toms, just the toms, nothing else in the performance. Do you think you could tell the difference in the context of a beat? Let's listen to a beat with all of the microphones in the mix. Again, you're gonna to wanna to make note of your guesses here and stick around to the very end when we give you the correct answers. The tom and snare mics are the only ones that are going to be present in this. None of the other microphones are going to be in this mix. See if you can tell whether the tom mics are mounted on stands or on the rims. We'll get into the snare drum in just a little bit. Now here's the thing, if you had to go back and listen to any of those again for a point of reference, then I would say that the difference was insignificant. But again, stick around to the very end and we'll share the results of these blind tests. Now toms are one thing, but what about the snare drum? In fact, it was a comment on a recent video where we were using one of these rim mounts for the close mic on the snare drum that actually inspired this episode. So without further ado, let's go ahead and do the same experiment with the snare drum. Can you hear the difference? Let's go ahead and pull the snare drum out of the kit and listen to some individual dynamic hits just for reference.
All I'm really picking up on here is a slight difference in pitch that's likely due to the fact that I was hitting some heavier rim shots between these different demonstrations. While the comparison we just presented started with the microphone mounted on a stand, we actually captured the microphone mounted on the rim first. Beyond the small difference in pitch, I'm not really picking up on anything else. Let's go ahead and listen to the close mic soloed. Even still, all I'm really getting is just a little bit of that pitch difference that wasn't anything to do with the mounting method itself. Now, of course, for fun, let's do a bit of a blind test. The difference in snare pitch between the two different demonstrations should make things just a little bit easier for you to figure out which is which if you're listening carefully. Here's a beat with all of the microphones in, starting out with a little bit of white noise just to reset the sonic palette. Now remember, if you had to go back and listen to the previous demos in order to make your determination, which is probably a guess at this point, then the difference, even with the pitch itself, is insignificant enough to not really matter. Let's do another blind test, but this time with the close mic soloed. As with the previous blind test, we'll start out with a little bit of white noise to reset the sonic palette. Now, if nothing else, this is an excellent exercise in critical listening. Making a regular practice out of this sort of thing is a fantastic way to train your ears. Now, in case it wasn't already clear here before we started, one of the most important factors in all of this is whether or not you've got a point of reference for comparison. The differences here are so incredibly subtle. It's not like we're listening to a recording of a snare drum and trying to determine whether or not the snare wires are turned on. We're listening to a bass drum and trying to determine whether or not there's a pillow inside pressed against both heads for muffling. Both of those examples have pretty definitive sounds regardless of how they're recorded. So without any point of reference, I'd say it's just about impossible to make a determination with any degree of serious consistency as to whether or not the close mics were mounted on the rims or on separate stands. If you were at all concerned about this sort of thing going into today's video, then hopefully you'll rest a little easier now. And from a big picture standpoint, it's important to recognize that there are all sorts of other factors that have so much more impact on the overall sound of our drums. Without exaggeration, I see comments every single day where people get hyper skeptical about what something is going to sound like based on what they see and without any point of reference. Healthy skepticism combined with some critical thinking is a good thing. Ask the question, does it matter whether or not the microphone is mounted on the rim or on a stand? But some people are in the habit of immediately planting a flag without asking the question at all. Mounting a microphone to the drum rim will immediately destroy all resonance of the drum. This just reeks of ignorance. Please, please don't fall into this trap. Unfortunately, many of us have been conditioned through marketing to focus on details that pale in comparison to the larger blind spots that actually do impact the sound of our instrument. That can also leave us susceptible to a way of thinking that is hyper skeptical without being willing to actually test and prove or disprove a hypothesis. This sort of willful ignorance can have a small impact at best or a very large impact at worst when it comes to making decisions. It's always best to ask the question, or even better, conduct an experiment. Try to prove the null hypothesis. That is to say, try to prove the opposite of what you believe to be true.
Okay, now what you've all been waiting for, the results of those blind tests. You had 50-50 odds on these, so it was pretty straightforward. And by the way, extra special thanks to all of those of you who support us by being paying contributors to our Patreon. If you would like to help support this channel and ensure that we're able to continue to produce these videos of all different sorts, please consider joining as a paying member over on our Patreon. Now, the first demo that we did with the floor tom without any point of reference was with the microphone mounted on the rim. Next up, the tom groove that we did with all the microphones in was also with the close mics mounted on the toms. The tom groove with just the close microphones was actually with the microphones mounted on separate stands. For the snare drum portion, the first groove that we did with all the microphones in was with the snare drum microphone mounted on the rim. And the shuffle groove with just the close microphone was with the microphone mounted on a separate stand. Now, if you didn't get some of these right or you missed all of them, don't worry. And congratulations if you got all of them right. Do you think you'd know in the context of a mixed recording with a full band? Probably not. And that's because the method used to mount the microphones on the toms in a recording is about as consequential as what brand of tea the lead singer decided to have before they laid down their vocal tracks.